Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Empty Geo Traders. My name is Taryn. Happy New Year. This is the first deck tech of 2019. And we're gonna talk about Mono Green Stompy right before Ravnica Allegiance previews kind of like start, you know, coming to a head. Uh, let's talk about Mono Green Stompy, a deck list I feel like a lot of people kind of forgot about uh, throughout the course of the past couple months. Is it Dregs kind of took over the format for a little bit? You still have some Mono Red in there. You still have some uh, Boros in there as well. Mono Green Stompy got a, kind of got pushed to the side, but I do think this deck list is still very powerful and quite cheap on Magic Online, as well as uh, not too terrible in Paper Magic as well. So let's get into the deck list, guys. Starting with, of course, our creatures. We have 32 in total. Deck list is also right below me and will be in the first link in the description as well if you want to look at the deck list that way too. Um, lots of different ways to look at the deck list. So let's talk about this. We've got four Atlanta War Elves, two Druid of the Cow, two Crawl Harpooner, four Merfolk Branchwalker, four Thorn Lieutenant, four Jade Light Ranger, four Sea Leaf Champion, and two Beast Whisperers. So Elves and the Druid here is, of course, for your ramp, your turn one, your turn two. Hopefully going for Land War Elf turn one, turn two going for a Steel Leaf Champion would be fantastic, or a J Light Ranger. That would be like the premier play for you. Um, if not, you wouldn't go Land War Elf, then Druid, then probably, Har uh, not Harpooner, uh, Merfolk Branchwalker. Harpooner is really here to deal with those Flyers, those Drakes that I talked about previously, as well as Arclight Phoenix and Aurelia. Harpooner is a fantastic card against that. Uh, some lists have this being at a four of. I really like it as a two of in game one because we don't exactly know what we're up against. And that fight mechanic, while it is fun, um, only affects creatures with flying. Uh, a lot of other like uh, deck lists also put in Pelt Collector in these lists as well. Again, I'm not necessarily a fan of Pelt Collector because sometimes Pelt Collector just becomes a 2-2 and just stays there for the entire game and then dies and uh, doesn't really contribute that much. Not a fan of that. I would much rather have a more impactful board presence with Thorn Lieutenant, Jade Light Ranger, and of course Steel Leaf Champion. Now, Branch Walker is here for us to help us kind of thin through our deck list for lands, kind of helping us ramp just like with the Druid and the, uh, the Atlanta War Elf here. But we can also kind of make sure we want a card on the top if we really want it or not by putting it on the top or into the graveyard as well. Moving on from that, we have Thorn Lieutenant, a two mana, two, three. You can pay six mana, giving it plus four, plus four, making this a six, seven. This can go toe to toe against a Carnage Tyrant in the mid to late game against a Mirror Carnage Tyrant, of course. So Thorn Lieutenant, fantastic. And if opponent does target it specifically, we still Still get a 1-1 one, one out of the deal, so pretty good as well for a 2-drop. Uh, Jade Light Ranger, again, doing the same thing that Branch Walker does, but can be a 4-3 on turn 2, which is quite good. Kind of going along the lines of Steel Leaf Champion here for us, a 3-mana 5-4, but it can be blocked by power 2 or less for the Steel Leaf Champion, so giving it a little bit of extra value there, getting over or under, rather, those uh, kind of mana tappers against a Mirror matchup or against a Goblin Electra list, like a, uh, you know, is it Drake's list as well. And Beast Whisperer is kind of curving out the top into the four mana slot here uh, being a two three whenever we cast a creature spell we draw a card so one of the things is with these aggro deck lists is that you kind of run out of cards pretty quickly beast whisperer while just being a two three isn't fantastic it can give you a lot of leeway in the mid to late game if opponent does not deal with it but that is not it for all our creatures we have two more in total we've got four carnage tyrant and two galta primal hunger i guess i'll say that's six two different creature types here uh, carnage tyrant is one of the premier green cards for us in the mat meta right now in standard and Galta Primal Hunger is just you know kind of a salt in the wound if you're up ahead in a match list. Um, Galta is just again a 12-12 with Trample is fantastic getting this out on turn four turn five is quite possible uh, with this deck list as well and Carnage Tyrant being a six mana seven six with Trample Hex Reef and can't be countered Ugh, it's just sweet. It has so many things here. It's a really big force to, to be reckoned with. Um, really, the only time, only thing they can do is go Cleansing Nova or Settle the Wreckage in white. And that's basically it besides, you know, going Deafening Clarion, doubling up on that, or uh, trying to just trade with it. And, you know, and that's normally not a very good idea for the opponent most of the time. But that is it for our creatures. We have 32 in total. A very heavily creature-reliant list. Moving on to our spells and Planeswalkers. We have two Vivian's Invocation and two of herself, Vivian Reed. Vivian Reed being a five mana five loyalty plus one negative three negative eight negative eight is really like not going to be used at all we can definitely get to it but it's not like what we want to be doing plus one here is look at the top four cards of your library you may reveal a creature or land from among them then put it into your hand put the rest on the bottom of your library so pretty good being able to sift through your deck list negative three though is being able to destroy an artifact enchantment or creature with flying so sort of going along the lines of the harpooner here and that's the reason there's not a complete full list of our complete four of of the harpooner in the deck list is because i really like vivian reed kind of filling that 
that slot as well, but giving us some added advantage of being able to deal with the artifact or an enchantment as well. Vivian's Invocation, on the other hand, is super powerful since we have Land War Elves, Druid of the Cow, and of course, a lot of exploring things in our deck list to kind of ramp up our, our uh, mana as well. A seven mana sorcery, look at the top seven cards of your library. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. When a creature is put onto the battlefield this way, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature and opponent controls. So you, this is the kind of the, the, the premier matchup you want to be doing here for this card. Vivian's Invocation, grab Galta Primal Hunger, demolish whatever's on our opponent's side of the field, <laughs> which is very, very nice. Um, now, more often than not, we'll probably grab a Carnage Tyrant or a Beast Whisperer or a Steel Leaf Champion. All of those things are really good in the deck list. So Invocation is going seven cards deep, so it's more than likely going to hit something we really want to hit the battlefield. And Invocation is going to, you know, get it on the battlefield and do that for us. So fantastic card, all around amazing. And for our lands, don't have them on here, but we have 24 in total. Just kind of simple, straightforward. Uh, didn't want to add anything else. We could have added Detection Tower, but Detection Tower doesn't really help us in game one at all, really. Um, and not really in game two either. So let's get on to our uh, sideboard here, talking about our sideboard. We've got two of the Harpooners, two Sorcerer Spyglass, and then three Death Gorge Scavenger, uh, two Thrashing Brontodon, two Ripjaw Raptor, two Aggressive Mammoth, and then uh, two Peleka Worm. Now the Harpooner is here because, again, if we're going up against a flying creature, uh, like a more Selesnia list with uh, the Shalai Voice of Plenty, something like that, uh, Harpooner is going to help us there. Sorcerer Spyglass is a great card to kind of shut down a control list, a Jeskai control list or Grixis control. I'm sure Grixis control might be the, the actual deck list to kind of beat uh, once Ravnica Allegiance comes out in full. Uh, Death Gorge Scavenger is here against the Golgari reanimation list, Golgari kind of uh, list where they have lots of stuff in the graveyard that you don't care about, or uh, Arclight Phoenix list as well can hopefully get rid of that. Thrashing Brontodon is here against a Selesnya list where they have Ixalan's Bindings, Conclave Tribunals, Seal of Ways, you want to be able to deal with those artifacts and enchantments on their side of the field as well. Ripjaw Raptor is really here for the Boros matchup as well as any kind of other aggro matchup like Mono Red. Being able to kind of get around a Lava Coil as well as draw us a card if they have damage dealt to it means that we'll, we, we'll be able to get around a lot of stuff and get a lot of card advantage for that. Aggressive Mammoth is here against the more Merfolk lists, the more like go wide strategy, Selesnya strategies. Um, a six mana 8-8 eight, eight with Trample, other creatures you control of Trample. Very simple and straightforward, but again, very effective for our board state since we do have a lot of large creatures in our deck list. And the last two cards here are against Burn, against the control lists, and against more mid-rangey lists. This is Peleka Worm, a seven mana, seven, seven with Trample. When there's a battlefield, we gain seven life, and whenever it dies, we draw a card. That's just all around amazing. It's a great rare for us. It's a great card in the sideboard. It's kind of funny that Peleka Worm was, I feel like originally was an uncommon, and they gave it, uh, pumped it up to a rare in this particular set. So Peleka Worm is fantastic. I love this card. And overall, I really like how our sideboard is kind of going up against a lot of different matchups pretty nicely as well. And again, if you want to build this on Magic Online, it's coming to about 63 tickets and on Paper Magic, it's coming to about 274 bucks. Again, the most pricey cards or the priciest cards in the deck list are going to be Jade Light Ranger and your Carnage Tyrant and Vivian Reed. That's going to be all of the ones that are going to be, you know, a few shekels extra than everything else in the deck list. You can, you know, of course, substitute those cards for something else if you want to. Uh, maybe some more Harpooners in the main board instead of the... Um, the J Light Rangers, or maybe something else like maybe Pell Collector instead. However you want to go about it, you can definitely make this deck a little bit cheaper for you. But that's the deck tech, guys. Let's get into some matches and see how this deck performs. All right, guys, let's get into it and uh, see how the Mono Green Stompy does. We're just doing best of ones here on Magic Arena. I'm just kind of showing off the platform here. And uh, we're not going to do like a post, uh, I guess, uh, voiceover on this video. So sometimes, or most of the time, I normally just record the content and then I'll do like uh, post content on top of that or recording on top of that to say, you know, hey, this is the best matches I picked through. But today, you know, let's just try something different. Let's just let's just try and get through a, uh, a match here or a couple matches rather and see how this actually performs for us. I'm gonna turn it down on my actual thing. Opening hand has two lands, Thorn Lieutenant, and lots of three drops. I really wish this Thorn Lieutenant was a Druid of the Cal or a Landmore Elf, because I'm gonna go with a Mulligan here. Um, not much better, but we do have a draw with the opponent and a scry. So Branch Walker on the top is fine. Um, would have loved to have seen a land instead of Branch Walker, but having a Branch Walker is perfectly fine. Uh, giving us a way to, uh, you know, kind of get through next turn, getting a creature on the battlefield, as well as hopefully getting into a land or getting a 3-2. So we're up against Boros here. Looks like a Llanowar Elf off the top for us. That's pretty good. Let's go Branchwalker instead, though. 
We want to see if opponent does have, so invocation, throw that into the graveyard. We want to see if opponent does have removal. Getting a 3-2 is not too bad. Knowing this is Boros, we're going to see removal probably on Branchwalker here or just have him, oh, actually playing up, looks like Jeskai here. Um, let's go with the Lattimore Elf instead here. This might get countered or removed. We're still going to go for an attack. Went with Lattimore Elf pre-combat to see if they, they would um, waste something on the Branchwalker instead of the Elf. They did not. Jeskai going in for their fourth land drop here. Going for a Crackling Drake. Drake it's a 0-4. So can't do much here. Let's go with the land drop into a Steel Leaf Champion. I like that play. We'd really love to go for a pass turn. Probably go for a Beast Whisper next turn. Again, Crackling Drake is a 0-4, so it can't do any damage to us this turn, but it can do a lot of damage over the course of the game if they have a lot of uh, looting stuff like uh, Radical Idea, Charter Course, that kind of stuff. So we really want to keep in mind that. Here's a Land Drop Force. We're up to five now. Let's go for a Beast Whisper pre-combat and see how they take that. I'm assuming they'll want to counter that. Wow, they don't. Okay, let's go for a Steel Leaf Champion attack here. And they let that through as well, so... Interesting line of play. Opponent might be looking for a Settle of Wreckage since they do have two white mana available to them. Or just a Cleansing Nova, that too. <laughs> Would love to hit the land off the top, we do not. Let's go for a Lieutenant into a Lieutenant. And just pass turn. I'm gonna save that champion for another uh, follow-up play. I like having both of these Lieutenants on the battlefield since if they do target them, they, uh, ooh, that hurts too. Ouch. Opponent with the, uh, the control here. Let's go champion pass. See if that hits. Might get syncopated or, of course, ionized. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so opponent definitely has the uh, the upper hand here in this match list. Not hitting our land drops has basically cost us the game here. Would love to get into six land drops for the Carnage Tyrant. They have four cards in hand and, of course, a Teferi on the battlefield. So this game kind of got away from us. And it's uh, basically just due to us not really being able to hit anything off the top. Hitting a Vivian is pretty nice. And we're going to go with a plus one here. And go probably didn't hit a land at all there. Hmm. I want to say we're only going to get one shot with this. So that's going to give us the ability to either go for a champion or beast whisperer or elf here. I like the champion here because it does mean that they have to answer it with something the following turn. If we hit a land off the top, which we might because we just dug four cards deep and didn't hit a land, uh, then we'll just go Carnage Tire instead. Yeah, they're going to bounce the uh, Vivian. That's fine. It makes sense. Drinking some coffee. Going to go Route is Advice Rory here. Yeah, Pun is definitely going all cylinders now. Four cards in hand. Getting rid of a land, getting a card in hand. We do hit a land off the top, so Carnage Tarrant is the first to come out here. So if they have a Cleansing Nova, they'll want to use it like immediately. And the reason being is, of course, is because uh, Carnage Tarrant is just a huge threat on their board state. Now, if they have a Settle the Wreckage, then, you know, we really can't do anything about this attack in here. But we definitely want to try and kill Teferi first and then Rouse second. And all the cards they just drew, of course, they, uh, they're digging for something right now. <laughs> so... I've never really seen them get Teferi and Rowl out at the same time, but wow. Yeah, so I'm assuming they're probably going to go with a Cleansing or just go with a Crackling Drake. Draw a card. They still have enough mana up for a Settle here, so we could still uh, run into something like that. And I believe we draw into Vivian this turn. It might be the next turn. If we draw into Vivian here, then we'll be able to kill the Drake and then able to attack in towards Teferi or Rowl pretty much unabated unless they have a uh, settle here. So it is just a land here. Let's go over and attack out to Teferi either way. And see how they line everything, have, have stuff lined up. I'm assuming they're going to have to sell the wreckage in their hand here. We'll see though. No, nope, Kimster's Insight instead. Okay, interesting. That does make the Drake a 4-4. But still can't really deal with a Carnage Tyrant. So we just get to destroy uh, Teferi there, which is nice. So this could mean that if once we play the Steel Leaf Champion, that they will have a Cleansing Nova the following turn. We'll see, though. Rawl being very close to its ultimate ability as well. We want to make sure we get rid of Rawl soon, if we can. And a Deafening Clarion dealing with the Carnage Tyrant. Strengthening, actually not dealing with it. They'd have to do a second one here. Do they have it? They do. 
So wiping the board here for them. That does hurt us, but we get into a Vivian next turn. And of course, Rawl uh, getting the emblem next turn is also not good either. Let's go to here, see if this hits. It does hit. Let's go plus one here. Would love to hit a Carnage Tyrant, and we do. The issue, of course, is they're just going to go emblem here and draw <laughs> draw cards every time they do anything. So that's what I would do with the Rawl in this scenario. They've already used three Deafening Clarions, by the way, with a Cleansing Nova. Emblem on Raw here. Teferi coming in. Look at that nice Teferi. Very nice. Bouncing Vivian. Search for Ascanta. This is basically it for us. We, I mean, we can still play the Carnage Tyrant here unabated, but they still have the ability here to draw cards with Chemistry's Insight, then deal damage to our face. And uh, of course, search cards with search for Ascantis. So we're really kind of in a situation where it doesn't really matter what we do. The opponent has the game pretty locked down. We can continue to crack in though and try. He'll be able to draw with Teferi. Untap. Ascanta, look for something. Again, they're going to try and look for a uh, removal spell. Got Lightning Strike off the top there. That's able to do seven points of damage to our face, which really hurts. Insight there. Okay. Draw two cards. Draw two more cards, thanks to the uh, Rawl here. Mm -hmm. Yep, seven. Down to seven. And then they have enough mana for... What, one other thing maybe? That's it. Good old concede. Ouchies. And sometimes it kinda it kinda works out like that, you know? So couldn't really do anything against that, but that's perfectly fine. Let's get into another match here and see what we can do. I really do like control right now in the uh, meta. I don't think it's that powerful. I do think Ravnica Allegiance will give hopefully a lot of much needed uh, gas to the fire uh, for the Azurius lists. Uh, we'll really see though. Uh, I'm really kind of interested to see what Azurius is gonna look like. I really don't like addendum as a keyword. I think it's kind of boring and um, kind of going directly against what you would wanna do as a control player. Um, so that's really one of the things that kind of makes me nervous about Azurius. Um, so if that's the case, we might see something that's more into the Spectacle Age, where it's more going to be Grixis instead of uh, Jeskai, uh, where we have the black instead of the white. Because, um, you know, I think Spectacle is much better than Addendum, because losing life per turn makes it not as hard to do uh, for, the, for most stuff within, uh, like, standard in general, because you have stuff like Shock, Lightning Strike, that kind of stuff, uh, versus Addendum, where you kind of have to just sacrifice your main phase for, if it's a really good effect, it's really good, but the cards they showed us were not that great. Opening hand here is a one lander. We're gonna go with a, with a mulligan. Two lander with a lieutenant. We go first. I don't like this hand either. Two Vivian Reeds in it is bad. Let's go with another mulligan here. You know what? I'll just keep it. Let's go with this on the bottom and lay a land and pass. Those were all terrible hands for us. Sort of mismatched overall. Getting a land here. Let's go with the... Let's go Druid here. Looks like we're going up against maybe a Boros list. Could be another control list. Gonna go with a Plains into a Revitalize. So this is definitely a Boros list of some sort. Hit a land off the top. Let's go with a Jade Light Ranger here. Could get a 4-3 for our trouble. Harpooner, let's keep that on top here. Seeing Aurelia out of this list could be really likely. So let's just have the Harpooner on top. Know that we'll hit a Branch Walker and then a Harpooner maybe. Keep in mind the Harpooner can still fight something with its three power. Um, it doesn't have to get the pump. It can still fight. Dragon Egg, okay. That's interesting. Let's go Branch Walker. Let's see what we get off the top. Get a land, not bad. Let's lay that land and save our Harpooner here and go to combat. Get in for 4-3. They're gonna block, obviously, to get a 2-2. No, they're not gonna block, interesting. Normally with the Dragon Eggs, they wanna block those immediately. Seven cards in hand from the opponent. I would like to see another land so we can go for a Vivian, but we can't go for a Vivian right now thanks to Druid, so 
Not too crazy. There's a Najani there. Just gonna go plus, I assume, making this a 1 3. Yep. Beast Whisper off the top for us. Not terrible, not great. Uh, we could go for that instead of Vivian here, since Vivian doesn't really give us that much as far as uh, leeway in the list here. Mm, I think we still want to go Vivian. Let's go Vivian and go plus one here. Let's see what we get. We have lands, champion, and branch walker. I think we want to go with branch walker here. Or uh, champion, not branch walker, champion. And get in for attacks here. Um, so let's attack out on a Johnny. Now they're going to trade with the uh, dragon egg or just take it. Wow. Man, opponents doing stuff I wouldn't think they would do. <laughs> I feel like they want to protect Johnny, but you know, you never know. Getting a 2 2 from a 1 3 seems like a good idea. But okay. Active treason from the opponent here. Maybe attacking out on Vivian here, both of them. Nope, just the one. Okay. We're still going to block that. We'll see how they uh, they play this out. They could have a shock to shock the Jade Light Ranger. Nope, they're just going to shock Vivian Reed. They did have a shock, but they didn't shock the Ranger to make sure we lost two creatures that turn. A little bit of a disappointment there. Let's go with a plus one here. Let's grab probably a land this turn. We could have grabbed the Carnage Tyrant for extra value, but I really like grabbing the land this turn. Let's go Beast Whisperer into a Thorn Lieutenant drawing a card. Galta off the top is really good for us, thanks to our board state being the way it is. And we'll just get rid of the Ajani here. Boom. There it goes. Bye-bye, Ajani. Four cards in hand, five man on the battlefield. So we did have like almost no mana at the start of this game and getting into five now, having six on the battlefield thanks to the Druid, really good way to bounce back from this match, especially Milligan down to five. Johnny's welcome here. So this is like maybe some of Johnny's Pride Mate style deck. I'm not really seeing the full effect of what this deck list is. Of course, this is best of one. So once we do take this list, uh, we won't be able to see it in a follow up match. Now they're going to try and attack Vivian again. We're going to go with a block here. I'm still going to let Vivian kind of build up on the battlefield. Um, so we're going to continue to do that. We could destroy the Ajani's Welcome. I'm not too worried about that. Um, let's go with a land drop. Might see a scoop from the opponent here. No? OK. Thought that we might have seen a scoop from the opponent. We might still see it. But gonna go Harpooner here to draw a card. And get in for a uh, six. Now the Whisperer can be blocked by the Dragon Egg. Or, you know, the J Light can be blocked by the Dragon Egg. This does create a 2 2 for them, so that is pretty advantageous. Next turn, we should have it up as far as the uh, Galta on the field here. Unless they have Cleansing Nova in hand. Tap land from the opponent with a Johnny on the field as well. So could get, bring back the dragon egg if they wanted to, right? Nope, they can't because it's a three mana. So all they can do is uh, plus here. Yes, yeah, so that's it. We have the game. Nice. And that's kind of how it works out sometimes. Like opponents draw too much mana. We draw too little mana. Uh, but right then we actually kind of uh, got to, you know, come back pretty hardcore. Oh, we have seven mana here for an invocation as well. Let's see what that hits. So we've got uh, another Galta, we got a Carnage Tyrant, we got a Thorn Lieutenant. Ah, let's just go Tyrant, that's fine. We get to demolish their 3 3. And then just swing all in. There you go. Very nice. Negative 7. <laughs> GG, opponent, GG. So against basically everything besides control, the invocation really does work pretty well. Um, and I like how it uh, interacts with the board state most of the time. And most of the time you're going to grab a Galta or a Carnage Tyrant. More often than not, you want to grab the Carnage Tyrant instead of the Galta. But the Galta is still a huge powerhouse hitting the battlefield. It's a 12-12 with Trample, guys. Like, you can't really beat that. The problem, of course, is that it doesn't have Hexproof. So it's going to get removed 
unless if the opponent does have removal for it. But if they don't, then they just die to it. So you really got to think about that. Uh, but let's get into our match three here and see how we do. Bronze Soul opponent versus us, the Blue Mage. Opening hand, two lands. I would like to see a third land. We keep seeing just two land hands. Branch Walker being in this hand, though, is nice. And we are going second, so we will be able to draw a card. So I'm going to go with the keep here. Green from the opponent. So it could be a Golgari list. We hit our third land, so that's pretty nice for us to leave champion on turn three. Um, if we hit another land with Branch Walker or draw into another land, Beast Whisperer on turn four is also nice. Celesnia so looks like from the opponent. Let's go with a land drop into a Branch Walker. I really like that play instead of Druid here. This does give us a land, so not terrible, not great. But this does mean that we will be able to pretty reliably play Rivian Reed pretty soon. Hopefully by turn five, we'll, be, we'll have five lands on the battlefield. Third land drop from the opponent, six cards in hand, going for an Adanto Vanguard. So this is definitely a Selesnya list. Would like to see them play something else. If we attack him with a Branch Walker, they most likely will pump their or pay the four life. They may not though, they may take the two. It's less to take the two damage instead of the four, so. Makes more sense to them. And then we'll just play the Steel Leaf Champion. Okay, maybe this is trading. Okay, that's interesting. Let's go with a champion here. Could have gone Drew to the Cow there. I think next turn we want to go Beast Whisper and then follow those up with a Vivian Reed. And then Druid, Lieutenant. We're not seeing too many of our hard hitters in the battlefield just yet. And I really like having Celia Champion thanks to the uh, Benalia hitting the battlefield. Um, however, the, I do see that Vivian Reed would have been really good this turn for the history. Um, let's go with a Beast Whisper since it can block a 2-2. Get in for five. One fourth of their damage or their life total. Not bad, not bad. Let's see, let's see. six cards in hand for the opponent. They get their two knights on the battlefield. Of course, the plus two, plus one will hit next turn. So we want to try and get out Vivian if we can this next turn, which we can definitely do that and get rid of the history. Path of Discovery from the opponent here. Okay, so this is a maybe explore Selesnia list. I really enjoy Path of Discovery. I think it's a very good card. Let's go with a forest here and go Vivian and get rid of that history before the pump, the pump happens. Want to make sure that that is out of the way so that we can continue to crash in and they can't crash in on us. Now, this does leave it open for Vivian to die this turn if they swing all out against Vivian. Uh, we can definitely block one of them with Beast Whisper, but we can't block the other, which will mean Vivian does die this turn. Um, we're very close, though, to having an invocation here. Just got to get out the uh, Druids and the Thorn Lieutenant. I think next turn we want to go with Thorn Lieutenant and a Druid of the Cow. Shalai, Voice of Plenty does help a lot for them. This also makes them uh, explore, but they do, do just get a land off that, so that's not bad. Having one land on the battlefield that's not untapped, though, or not tapped, is nice. Looks like a pass from the opponent. Let's go with a... Hmm, this is a negative three, yeah. Let's go plus one here. Would love to hit... Ooh, hit a Galta, very nice. Let's see... I think we want to go with Galta, actually. Since we do have seven on the battlefield. Yeah, we'll be able to spend all but one for Galta. So let's do that. We still get to draw a card here. And then next turn, go Invocation. Um, let's get in for Steelleaf Champion once again. And if they don't kill Vivian with Shalai this turn, uh, then we just win because we get to destroy Shalai. However, if they don't have a, an answer for Galta next turn, we still get to win. Um, but since this is a Celestia list, I'm pretty sure they're going to have either Cleansing Nova or Settle the Wreckage in their hand. Um, they're going to decide to actually chump block that, going down to, t to uh, just two creatures. Very interesting play there from the opponent. So it does tell me they don't have Settle the Wreckage. They're trying to save their life total. Hmm. Land draw from the opponent now. Four cards in hand. They should have probably played the plane since we do see the planes in their hand from that path of discovery. But they, they might need the green mana as well. I still think we're probably still going to win this match, though, the following turn. Loxodon here. Now, this does come in, and they do get to explore. 
He's also become uh, three threes. However, they're tapped for the turn, so another land from the opponent. Not great, honestly. I would have pref actually preferred to have a Loxon that gained them life as well. But I don't see this really happening for them. Looks like a pass here. Uh, let's go with the land and um, let's just go Invocation. Would love to hit a Carnage Tyrant. Opponent scooping. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. That's nice. Very nice. Oh man. Well, we did our three matches. Very nice. Actually, I'm really loving this deck list. I think it's really fun. Um, I do think this deck is pretty powerful. Uh, but let me know what you guys think, of course. And uh, back to the main video. All right, guys, that was the deck tech. Those were the matches. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm changing my camera pretty soon. So if you notice this be kind of wonky today and like all the shadows moving and stuff like that, it's because it's on a webcam that's uh, not technically optimized just yet. So I'll be uh, adjusting that in future videos. But I love you guys. Like video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I think I've already said that probably, but you know, that's kind of my spiel. <laughs> but yeah, share this video around with, uh, with your friends and uh, play Mono Green Stompy. It's a fun deck. I really like it a lot. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. See you in the next one. Happy New Year. Peace.